Hi, my name is Josh Hines and I'm a senior applications engineer with Rapid3D. Today I'm going to show you the HandyScan Black Elite 3D laser scanner. This is a handheld, self-positioned laser scanner which allows me to scan a part like what you see here on the table with no external tracking system. All we need to do is apply a target pattern to the part. It's completely random pattern and the spacing uh, up to about 120 millimeters. After the targets are applied to the part, uh, then the scanner is connected to a laptop which has VX elements installed on it. We calibrate the scanner. It's a 10 second uh, field calibration with a calibration board. Uh, and then we can configure it for the color itself. Now our scanner has a number of buttons for control. And I've already initiated the scanning sequence. And I can uh, start the lasers by pressing uh, the green button on top of the scanner. So immediately, you see data start to appear on the screen. So our acquisition rate is 1.3 million points per second. And we just moved the scanner back and forth over the part uh, with a standoff of about 12 inches. I've picked the scanning resolution of 3 quarters of a millimeter here. And that's going to allow me to get uh, a decent amount of detail, but also keep uh, a good speed. So the hand controls on the scanner <clears throat> allow me to zoom in and out. And that's just the view on the screen that doesn't do anything with the data itself, but also allow me to change our exposure settings, or we call them shutter. This allows me to compensate for uh, darker or lighter parts. So because this system is completely self-positioned, um, not only can we move the handheld scanner, we can also move the part. And it has no bearing at all on the end result. What can't happen is that the target pattern itself can't flex or change shape. We're going to go over all holes from a few different perspectives to make sure that we actually get the walls of a small hole. So if I zoom in here using the buttons on the scanner, you can see that I can get confirmation that I have data inside the edge of the hole, which is what we need for positioning on the hole for either inspection or reverse engineering purposes. We also have a single line laser functionality. And what this allows us to do is it allows the laser to be seen by only one or the other camera. It doesn't have to be seen by both. So in circumstances where I have a tight area, like we see here, I can double click the scan button and get to the single line laser mode. And you see that data that wasn't filling in before is now filling in fairly nicely. It's something we simply use in, in tight areas where we can't get the triangulation from both cameras to the center laser uh, to work. So now I've stopped the scanning process. And because we're scanning directly to mesh facets, very quickly, you see that the scan is ready for editing. Now what I'm able to do uh, with one of the wizards we have called Remove Background is, is quickly remove all of the data from the table below. I will just increase the thresholds because the table isn't particularly flat. And we're creating a clipping plane. It automatically detected a flat planar surface, inserted a clipping plane, and I told it to bump it four millimeters off that surface. And you can see that right away, well, we've trimmed that all off. Now what I'm going to do, flip the part over, repeat the process again, and merge the two scans together. So you see here that I've flipped the part, um, rescanned, and then used the background removal to get rid of the table again. In this particular case, I, I did the scan in a separate session. We do support multiple scans inside of a single session, but this is a way to keep the file size a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use our merge scans function. And I don't have the scan in this session, so I'm going to add it from an external session. All right, now you'll see that the second scan has shown up. Uh, currently, they're just overlaid on each other, uh, uh, not aligned at all. Um, 
we have three different ways uh, to merge scans. Um, the first one is based on common targets between the two scans. The second one is based on common surface geometry, and the third one is a fine-tuning when we have more than uh, two scans. In this case, we have common targets between the two, so that's the method we're going to choose. And then we essentially click on the second scan, tell it the minimum number of targets, and I want there to be uh, quite a few, so we'll try 30, and uh, hit the Align button. And it should be that quick. You see that uh, right away they snap in to be aligned to each other. And the targets that have gone red are the ones that have been used uh, for the alignment. So we see that they're distributed all the way around the part. And uh, we're, we're quite happy with that. So we're going to accept that result. And now we're going to click Merge. There we go. The merge is complete. And the final combined surface has been uh, generated. So now the final thing we need to do before we can export an STL that we would bring into reverse engineering or inspection software is uh, to finalize the scan. There we are. So that's the finalized scan. So this scan is ready for export uh, as an STL.